So we're just waiting, you guys, for a few more people to arrive. So. Yeah, there's a lot of people stuck in traffic, I guess. The joys of, of coming back from COVID, we have traffic again. <laughs> Am I sitting in someone's coach spot? No. No, I think it's up there. I love it. It's Nick Zion. It's like five after. Can we start? Yeah, we should roll. Can we start? Hi. Are you here as a guest? Yes. Oh, awesome. Great. Welcome. I'm Laura. I'm Sean. Sean, nice to meet you. Did you have the, um, did you have it at home? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Just let us know if you have questions. Okay. I saw you say yes, Bindi. Okay. I'm going to do roll call, knowing that there are some people stuck in traffic. Um, so I'm Commissioner Anderson, your co chair. Um, Helia Blank. Are you present? Yep. Not yet. Okay. Um, Rebecca Benoit. She's absent. She's absent. Uh, in New York. Great. That sounds fun. Um, Jim, are you present? Yes, I see your name. Yes, here. yes, I'm here. I'm here. Just uh, <laughs> stuck in traffic. We know on her way. Um, April Rose Castillo. I don't see her yet. Don't see her yet. I'm just gonna. So, I'm having some sound issues. So this is Sarah Rohr. I just wanted to say I it keeps coming in and out. So I'm gonna be putzing around with it if you're doing roll call. Okay. Okay. In that case, I'll say Sarah Rohr, and she can say yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Jane Dahl. Um, Sharon Dunham. Yes. Oh, oh Sharon. Yes. Sharon Dunham. Yes. Um, Shelly Fagan. She's not with us anymore. Yeah. So. Ryan Hendricks. Here. Shoshana Lansberg. Well, Shoshana right there. Here. Dupai. I'm here. Okay, okay, still away. Oh, sitting next to me. <laughs> Sydney Trimble. Here. Cindy Germany. Here. Uh, Jacob Wachira. <laughs> okay, we got everybody. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. Um, if April shows up, April could speak up and this group be here soon. Okay, we'll know. I'll know. I'll make a note of when they arrive. <laughs> and we have one person from the public, sir. Do you wanna? Do you wanna introduce yourself? Uh, Sean Philbrook, recent, uh, recently moved here, new residents in the area. So just uh, want to get more involved and see what's going on. Sean's so well, here. Starting out like me in the back of the room. Yeah. I know that we are, um, Council of Law will be dropping by, but I know that she had a meeting that went all the way about by. So, okay. Yeah. Hey, Jim, long time no see. From now on. We only have one person to go up. We just have one. Oh, Awesome. Well, uh, okay. welcome to our fun little retreat. It's uh, a little hybrid today. Um, uh, to, uh, to all of you have the breakout agenda um, available at home as well as here if you have a copy. Um, uh, we're planning on uh, reviewing the sparkle that people submitted. Um, some were pretty fantastic. Um, uh, we had, uh, and then we're going to move into uh, a bunch of open conversation uh, for those that like to converse um, about a few things. 
And then uh, the idea is, is that um, this is a, a minute and a half pages. Um, uh, it, it's basically after conversation, uh, you know, for each member of the council to have an opportunity to pitch uh, to support another commissioner's um, uh, goal uh, and to put forward their own goal. Um, uh, any specific goal that they want to officially make sure that uh, becomes a priority for us um, in this next year, two, or three. Um, and then, um, and then, uh, and, and then after the pitch, <clears throat> uh, we'll provide ourselves an opportunity to kind of do a quote unquote first vote. It's kind of like a write in, right? So we're going to write down um, basically uh, what our goal is. And we want to make sure that the goals are very specific, right? And then we can measure them. So next year we can see how well that we did. Uh, and that uh, they're relevant to what's happening, um, and that they um, have a time frame of some sort, so that we have a goal in front of us, and then um, uh, that they're attainable. Um, forgot the A there, but um, uh, you know we, we don't want to set too lofty of goals that are unattainable, and um, you know sometimes <laughs> goals need smaller goals to get there. So um, uh, we want to be sure that we're successful in what we're doing. So. Um, and then, um, so, so for that exercise, uh, we got a bunch of post it boards. So everyone here that's present, um, uh, I'll pass down some markers, um, and then we'll write some stuff on, on the, uh, post-it, uh, boards, and then we'll post them on the wall and then we'll share out those that are virtual. You guys will have a little easier. You get to type them in just chat and then we'll share them out orally so that um, everyone can hear, hear it. Um, and I think it's really important, especially for those at home, if uh, we're reading out something here and you guys can't hear us, please speak up, let us know. Um, I'm pretty sure you'll have to tell us multiple times because we'll be tired of talking about it. Um, so don't feel bad, just you know, speak up. Um, and, then, um, and then we'll get into like prioritizing what's going on. Um, you know, and you guys can kind of see the rest of the agenda. Um, one thing that I wanted to um, to do is um, is uh, remind ourselves that we have meeting agreements, right? Um, sometimes when we're setting goals, everyone um, uh, gets very passionate, um, but we want to remember that we do in your binders. You know, we have some goals that we set to respect each other in the meetings and stuff like that. So um, you know, just be sure that you maintain open and accommodating. Um, you know, be open minded and respectful and attentive um, to others' points of views. Listen actively, communicate clearly, and be present and participate. Um, and always keep your role as a commissioner and the purpose of the commission in the foreground of our work here. Um, and strive to be clear and drive toward resolution. You know, and, um, you know, we have some great opportunities to do so um, from here. Um, so before we get rolling, um, does anyone have any questions about what we're doing today? Excellent. Well, one of the activities that we're going to do a little bit uh, later on is called Death Street Dots. Um, and Death Street just walked in. Um, <laughs> so, uh, if, uh, Death Street, uh, uh, we need to uh, do a little bit of work while we're doing some other stuff. And so Death is going to just introduce what we need you to do at the moment um, while we're talking and presenting uh, the SMART goals and having an open discussion. So go ahead, Death Street. Um, so everybody in front of you, it looks like you have some post-it notes. Um, on those as we're going, if you can do a, a doodle or different doodles, not like extremely complicated, but something that you'll recognize as being your own because we're going to use those later to mark up on Sparkle. So just something that you know that can identify as that's my post-it design on there. And be unlimited for how many you can do, but I mean, don't feel like you need to do the whole stack because ideally <laughs> we're looking for like three main ones that you'll put it on, but there might be more than that, so. And this is for the dot exercise. And so after we set some goals up, we we all get dots and we can say we appreciate this goal, we appreciate this goal, we want to work towards this one, we want to work towards this one. And so it's just putting our mark on 
I'm overdoing, you know. Um, we and, that. Uh, yeah. 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 And uh, and then uh, those at home, unfortunately, you guys can do the same doodles and stuff, but uh, um, you might have to put emojis in the chat, um, you know, so that we know. <laughs> um, and when it comes time to the dot, we'll uh, we'll assign a a, a, a survey. We'll uh, uh, have you type into the chat what your priorities are, and then we'll kind of. Um, we'll monitor the chat. Yeah, we'll monitor it. Floor one, so. Yeah. So okay. we'll work our way through that. So are y'all just to clarify, y'all are just creating like a little piece of art, like a doodle you said on on the post-it. Yeah, yeah, so we know it's customized. Art. Okay, got you. Yeah. It's something that signifies you. And you uh I can identify as yours. Yeah. Gotcha. Last year we gotta choose between stars and circles and things like that that they were pre made. This time we get a draw in person and then, you know, you guys get a different opportunity at home. So uh, just a little fun activity as we go along. So um, looks like I'm running a little bit behind, so I'll get moving. Um, so I just want to review the SMART goals. I want to read them out loud in this case I didn't, anyone didn't have an opportunity to read through them today before they came. Um, I thank everyone for uh, those that participated um, in, in providing them. Um, they're all very good. Um, they're all very thoughtful. Um, and um, I posted a couple worksheets in the email that I sent out because uh, there was a lot in there, very, very strong thoughtful um, uh, submissions. So, um, but I kind of boiled it down in the email and you guys follow along, you can read along with me. But uh, the first one, um, and uh, these are all designed to be printers, right? To engage in conversation um, directly after this. Um, so, uh, uh, first one is as a part of Arts Live Here campaign, uh, which would uh, identify existing art and encourage the expansion of art in our community. We should a review the inventory of art the city may already have. B organize a spreadsheet cataloging art within the NAC. I'm oh, sorry, within each NAC. C develop a project statement of what is needed. Uh, quote unquote, in inventory existing art throughout the city, capture any proposed art installations within the NACs, educate the NACs about BAC, the NAC grants. D, reach out to a variety of populations, i.e., marginalized populations, populations representing the diversity in our community, veterans, mental health agencies, the homeless in our city, intergenerational communities, high school students, etc. And E, and okay, this may be a pipe dream. Um, have citywide uh, neighbor. I'm reading that. I'm not joking. Um, <laughs> uh, have citywide neighborhood art um, events. Um, develop neighborhood art walks based on the information we receive. Develop a booklet mapping the art within our city. Uh, this idea could easily take a left turn and become something totally different. And I'm okay with that. Um, the next smart goal that was submitted was to simply incorporate uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion in, in everything that we do this year. The third smart goal submitted um, uh, was to uh, su uh, supply arts through the Beaverton libraries, um, as well as uh, artist residencies and vacant spaces. Um, and uh, this submission, uh, this commissioner had a beautiful idea about having student artists and marginalized teams um, apprenticing with Evergreen Prosthetics um, and Orthos um, with a website there that you guys all have. Um, the idea is to come when I was reviewing the work uh, of Fred Harwin, who uh, makes gorgeous eyes for folks who have lost their I'm very creative. Um, uh, the next smart goal is uh, research, create, and publicize a Beaverton walk, art walk, digital map within three years of the project um, uh, start. Um, uh, this is what was written at the end of the smart goal sheet. Um, I provided a smart goal sheet on this one because it's very, very detailed and uh, very thoughtful. Um, so I recommend reading you through that a little bit as uh, we're talking through. Um, uh, 
the next smart goal is within the next two years, I would like the BAC to host an event similar to the Portland movie and the park events, but solely art focused, featuring movies, uh, documentaries, or music videos by local creators or not. Live performances of children, amateur and established artists, um, pop up exhibitions, sorry, excuse me, um, installation activities, opportunities for vendors uh, to showcase food as art. Um, this event would take place in one of Everton's public spaces and should be held at least annually. This goal would contribute to the Beaverton strategic outcome through economic prosperity. Opportunity to showcase talents and uh, be a representation of welcoming, well, and fun communities. Uh, the last smart goal that was submitted uh, reads as follows Keeping with the values of the Beaverton Arts Commission and in alignment with the city's goals to have a welcoming community, economic, economic prosperity, quality infrastructure, and community wellness and fun, I propose the commission form a subcommittee to advocate for the assistant, um, uh, sorry, to assist in drafting a proposal to revise chapter 3.16 um, of the city code, um, acquisition of art, otherwise known as 1% for the arts, um, by the time the BAC presents their yearly update to the city council in December to address uh, uh, needs for ongoing sustaining funding and applicability. Um, there, um, that following paragraph, I don't need to read. It's uh, it's going well. I'll read it. It's just here. Um, a little more detail on on uh, what uh, they're trying to say is a review and comparison of this program to similar programs in other cities uh, would help to inform this code update. However, at a minimum, the revision would address the need to maintain the art installed um, by this code but also expand the applicable projects um, that would dedicate funding for our investment. Additionally, it would address uh, the vagueness of the term of set aside to define it as a placement in an interest bearing account managed by the Beaverton program. Um, anyone have any questions that they wanted to, or comments that they wanted to make about the SMART goals before, well, actually it's a good segue. I don't, yeah. really, I don't really need to manage this. Um, I will, um, we're gonna go into open discussion. I will try to moder uh, moderate the discussion a little bit. So I'll try to look at people's hands and things like that. Um, uh, you know, uh, we don't need to follow Robert's rules or suspended for this retreat, obviously. Um, and uh, and uh, so if we start getting a lot of people wanting to talk, just start raising your hands and then I'll, I'll, I'll pop in and start moderating. So. Um, anyone want to kick us off? You can talk about goals, uh, the smart goals that were presented, or you can bring up new ideas. It's uh, basically a brainstorming set. I'll kick it off because <laughs> I, I have one I didn't submit. Okay. So, one of the things, one of the goals that I would like to see us do is it, it, it knits together the diversity topic as well as um, healing for the arts. So I would like our arts, uh, healing through art. So one of the ideas that I have been sort of tossing around is that we develop a program that we have a diverse group of people potentially as a kind of TED talk format, potentially as a single presenter or two presenters that talk about their own art as well as their personal story around how being an artist of any kind, a dancer, a singer, a musician, a painter, any kind of art um, has not only helped them heal their own wounds, but helped others. Um, we're in the middle of a really, um, you know, the time that we're in from COVID through this war that's going on with Ukraine. And there's a lot of people who, um, who will use art as a catalyst um, for their own healing as well as the healing of their communities and each other. Um, so that, though, I'd like to, you know, create that program um, and present that program. 
in 2022. <laughs> so there's my time down at some point this year. Yeah. Do you foresee using having professionals within the healing arts kind of process or just you know, yeah. grassroots kind of thing? Because it sounds like you're getting into something that could be very beneficial, but also has potential because you're getting into things that could be medical or psychological right. that you want to be real careful about what you put out there. Oh, sure. And, sure. and I suspect that when, if it's art commission to do that and city council has to approve it, if I were on their side, I'd be a little bit of a less of a lawyer brain than my husband and he'd say, well, oh, I think you got that. Oh, yeah. So could you talk how you yeah, um this more as more as a um you know how how have I used how have I used my art to as a catalyst for you know my own well-being. Right. So yeah, yeah. If I could pick uh, I want to say chime in on that idea. Um, um, so I like it. I think it's cool because art is therapeutic for me. It's like very, it is cathartic. It's therapeutic. Um, so it, it sounds like it could be like, um, like a, like a. I don't know. Did you did you say like invite? I'm sorry, I missed the beginning of it. Did you say like um, invite artists to share that or like have it like like an event? Like what I. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So it, like, there would be presenters that are, you know, that are chosen, that are paid, that are, you know, people who are professionals in whatever they do, um, whether it's actors or, you know, whatever. So yeah. Select, I guess, would be the word. Do you see that being as like a? Would that be like a, like a weekly event? Like, how do you see that? No, I would I would imagine it would be um, either a, a series gotcha. of say you know six presenters, whether they come in pairs or individuals, um, and then see how it goes, measure it, see what the response is, and and determine whether it continues. So I, I, I'm going to answer something. I mean, I know that I'm supposed to stop liaison, but it's something that I talked. Well, there are two things that I talked with some of you about. One of them is um, our grants program. Um, we saw um, the grant committee saw a lot of requests for um, grant funding for the uh, rental of the research uh, space, and. Um, so I think we, we need to consider either a venue grant um, that's specifically dedicated to that. And then the other part of it, which is something that we, we talked about um, in the grants committee is that this space is booked up for over a year at this point. So um, it's really hard to find inroads for people who are really just like, you know, um, scraping together money, they don't want to commit to a space until they have funds in place to do it. So we would potentially, um, the Arts Commission would have a hold on a select series of dates that are dedicated, that are already booked, already reserved for these kind of community grant, uh, grantees to use the space. So you're sort of guaranteeing that they have space because that's the tricky thing with the grant, we have to spend it in, in the fiscal year. And if they're having to book out 18 months, that's not going to work. We can't just give them money and then have it have it happen, you know, 18 months down the road. So um, that is something that I think I don't know. I, I would like to put some thought into. Um, and then the second thing that I, we had talked about before um, is I think that all of us are um, big advocates for access. And we know that there is a percentage of our of, of our population, our residents here that can't afford to come to shows here. And so I just thought that it would be an amazing opportunity for the Arts Commission to sponsor a free community concert that is funded by the city, sponsored by the Arts Commission, and it's like a free for all event. Like anyone can come. Is that we remove that barrier of cost. 
Um, it would obviously be first come first serve because you know the spaces in the auditorium are finite. But I think that like um, I think that would go a long way, and I think just we've already heard some some feedback that it just feels a little unaffordable for some folks. And I think especially right now, still people are feeling pretty stretched um, financially. So I'll, I'll just uh, those are my thoughts. We finished. We we heard that comment before the city is built out. Yeah. Yes. So it remains. Yes, it remains a concern. Yeah. Sarah, go ahead. I just had a wondering. I know some performance venue spaces do the thing where they have like a little pocket of tickets that they save for folks who can like lotto in. So that it's not one lump sum, but it's like uh, uh, throughout the season. Um, yeah. if, if, is that possible? Um, and then I wanted to also ask about the space because at least um, to sort of dovetail on what you said, but also to expand on it, you and I had had a conversation about um, the possibility of artists and residents spaces around the city and maybe seeing if there's um, spaces that could accommodate artists for a week or a month or three months, what have you. Um, and I'm wondering, that seems like it's not connected to the reserve because I hear you, it's booked out for a long time, but I'll just I'll want to throw that in the pot as well. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. I mean, I think that we can consider spaces that aren't necessarily the research too for for those residencies. Um, you know, we've got a lot of vacant space around this area. We're trying to identify this district as an arts and innovation hub. Um, so if we can find spaces, vacant spaces, sort of like a storefront program that they do in other cities where artists will take over a space for, for almost no rent at all or free for the time that they have it. And then, uh, you know, they'll be working on their, I mean, visibly working on their stuff in the storefront and do an installation or whatever um, their uh, medium discipline is. So there's, there's possibilities there. I think it's just finding the right, the right partnership. And that's something that I feel like Woods Group probably should talk about more, just the private public partnerships that we can leverage. That kind of segues into mine, which includes the scope of DEI and reaching communities and kind of goes off of what Sarah was saying. Uh, as far as us having a presence at the farmer's market and maybe partnering with the library, whether we had a booth there like once a month or once a quarter, and then being able to staff with, with their people. And I mean, at the farmer's, I, I love the farmer's market. I don't know who else goes there, but like, it is a melting pot of people that we're not probably connecting with otherwise. And um, what Sarah said that kind of links into that connection with the library. Uh, I know in college we had different um, like tickets available for certain events that would be going on that were otherwise um, inaffordable to college students. So the library would maybe have like four tickets to each event that was going on and it was on a first come first serve basis, but it was to students. So maybe if it was a way of having members of the community who know they have access to that at the library, which would could also be something that we're promoting, but to have some safe seats at every event or every few events or something is a way of connecting what Sarah said. Um, and doesn't that also go with the outreach to marginalized groups? Yeah, 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 yeah. For, yeah the, the DEI people that don't know we exist that are shopping at the farmer's market or selling food there or different ways that, that we can partner with them and, and reach out. And I, hopefully some of us would all, I know I would volunteer to be at that booth and connect with the community, even for grants in, in connecting with people and reaching a wider scope and making sure people are aware of that, I think our presence needs to be out there. Um, and I love the farmer's market so I, I love it. that idea. <laughs> I'm with you. Yes. Uh, I love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
anybody else have any other thoughts like in regard to the the list that ryan read off of the smart goals um just reactions anything that stands out to you that you're like this has really got me interested even if it's your own <laughs> can, can y'all repeat the one it was like a mentor i guess more so like mentorship program ish can you repeat that one you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so there, this uh, person had a bunch of different ones. Um, the third one was they had an idea about having students and marginalized teens apprenticing with the evergreen prosthetics in orthotics. Um, uh, Who's that? What's that? Who's that? You want to find that one? Is it eyes? It's eyes. Yeah, it's eyes and other, maybe other oh, body parts. Oh, pro prosthetics. Prosthetics, yeah. Got you, got you. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, 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 it's cool. Any way of, of, of broadening that would be to have an, an available mentorship program right. of, of maybe different either organizations or artists in the community that both submit their interest to us and being a mentor and then get matched and only have, you know, we've had this many mentors interested for this year or however long we want to make it or how many months. And then that's how many applicants we can accept based on that and, and interest and, and have like a matching situation. The robotic so does be super specific, but I really like the direction that it's going and, and creating that. So like facilitating mentorship matching would be the three yeah. the three connector. Yeah. Um, between the community and people seeking. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, I could see, oh, sorry, I yeah, what, what would the venture be about? That's what I'm not clear on. I guess yeah. it would depend on the organization. Is it a painter that wants to mentor student painters? Or if it's the like the orthotics one, for example, that's more specific. Maybe it's, I think we had talked about this a little bit last night, but Ryan had said that students who are artists might not realize that you don't just have to like paint or play an instrument or this. You can go into science with your art. Okay, that's, that's the piece I was missing. Who's mentoring who about what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, met a, like, yeah, I met an artist up in uh, Leavenworth, Washington. You know, they have the little markets out on the street now. And uh, there's this artist that had this amazing, like, um, beehive and, like, um, drawing. And she, like, drew every hair of the bee and, like, every optic line, you know? And it was, like, so precise it was like it was done done by like a printer or something like that and i was like wow this is amazing i never seen such a technical drawing and then she after some conversation she was like well you know i do this for a living and, and i was like oh that's great you make money as an artist well you know and, and it's no 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 i uh, i work for a biomedical firm and and i draw little cells that people can't picture or see and um and i render it in um as realistically as possible and i was like wow i didn't know that existed <laughs> i like the idea of like having sort of um like uh general general creative industry so like a sign shop um practicing with um somebody who does like vehicle graphics um fashion design and we have a a, a cosmetic company that's global here like there, there are things that you know can be sort of like an incubator um and i think you know we could we could start that in a way where we like put out a call like who wants to who wants to to kind of like share their skills who's open to that because that's really like what you need you need that commitment like that i'm invested in this i want to you know turn my skills over to someone and i want like that um art form or whatever they do to carry on so um i think that that might be i mean that's very specific and real down but i feel like that's a way to establish like, who's really interested in doing that and then then you know kind of doing that matchmaking between young people like are you interested in the next thing or um, not young people I mean, yeah or anyone anyway. all, all people right yeah so if you know i love this idea because you have people who want to share what they know 
and people who want to know what they have what they have to offer and you could even have an aspect of it that is um like are there um are there companies like McMinimins or Nike or whatever that has artists as part of their staff, their employees. Like I mean, Nike designers are some of the best designers. In, you know, there are, and there are a lot of them, right? Because the, the same line is doing baseball or bat, basketball, you know, uniforms also yeah. is doing other uh, their own personal art. Yeah, I see that. Jane, kind of started hands up. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. I wasn't looking up. Jane? You're muted. Yeah, I know. I was trying to get my cursor over the mute button. Um, just one of the things, I think this might fall under DEI, and Sharon's aware of this too, but um, Kevin Teeter from the Beaverton Downtown Association has been very instrumental in supporting artists. And I think it was a couple months ago, uh, he started the first pop up shop. And he wants to continue these. And I think there's one Sharon was saying this weekend. And he's always looking for artists at the last minute. And I just kind of fell into it a couple months ago by default because they had a jewelry artist that backed out and he was scrambling around trying to find other artists and it's just word of mouth. But if we could help him, you know, partner with the Downtown Business Association and have a list of artists um, that would be interested. Um, because when I did the pop up shop, there was fine artists and uh, photographers and wood artists, myself. And um, I think he's scrambling around for this Saturday also. But if we could, you know, help him um, and help artists, you know, through our networks of having a list so he can actually have people that are committed and it's not all this last minute scrambling around and, um, you know, we can find diverse populations uh, to participate um, at any one time. And I think well, when I did it, there was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe seven of us. Um, and uh, and there's, they do it at different spots um, around Beaverton. So uh, just throwing it out there as maybe a goal that we can do to, you know, just to partner and, and becoming more aware of the need in the, in the community, but also making ourselves more um, visible to other people in the community and to artists. Can I tag on to that? I'm sorry. sorry. No, no. Um, just uh, because Kevin called yesterday afternoon and meets at Saturday morning. Um, if there are on this call, one, two, or up to three artists that can do mocha tea on Farmington. Um, I think it's uh, noon to four, be there by 11. I think it's supposed to rain. So, you know, it's not, uh, it's kind of dicey. You might need a, a tent. But he's looking for any artists that might uh, just pop up this Saturday from noon to four. So, the, so, what so is, just get a hold of Kevin Teeter, or you can get a hold of me and I can, I can get a hold of him. What are they going to do there? <laughs> just a pop up for artists. You sell your your art, and it's an opportunity where you don't even pay to, for the venue. Um, you can give a donation back to the BDA, but um, it's a free opportunity for you to sell your art and and build a network. Um, you know, I became friends with all the artists that were there. Some of them I knew, some of them were new to me, and um, yeah, just building your network, getting yourself out there as an artist, and selling your work. As part of the bubble tea walk. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that, that just ties into an idea that we had before and I think we talked about creating a list of resources and suppliers. Yep. Not only for the artists to find work, but people who have work to find the artists. And, and have that as a resource that we would have available to yeah, anybody. And and that would be, you know, we have among this group there must be Enough connections to build an enormous list of artists. Would so, sorry, question. Um, would that be uh, like our own list or like to partner with someone like 12 Health Gates or a regional group to add think, to and be advocates for? Or I, I think the more you get the better, you can cooperate with the 12 Health Arts, with the other arts associations in the area. The whole point would be to be a resource for artists, a 
I don't think you need to re reinvent the wheel. There's lists already. We just need to compile them and, and put them in one spot. Yeah, yeah. and promote them and make it, make it available to right. anybody who wants them. The whole idea is to keep the name out there and what you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we put out a new our operation that we can offer our registry is typically like, we call that so that we, you know, we can self select, like, I want to be on this list. Right. And I'm already saying, like, I'm signing up. I know, like, I want to be, I want to do this. Right. So that way it's sort of like, it's already a filter for people who have said, I'm interested. You don't have to kind of like start from scratch every time you have an opportunity that crops up. Right. Yeah. I, I remember hearing another person on here. People yeah, I'm sure the night market has a long list of um, art vendors that they have. That they send their uh, call for artists. We have one at TBC for La Strada. So, um, and any other, you know, opportunities that we've done a call for artists like BAM. I mean, the lists are there. We just need to consult, you know, put them in one database and have them accessible. And, and promote, promote that it exists and have them point out. Which is kind of the same concept I'm hearing behind the art block. There are things that. Kind of, I got, I think that started in the past, perhaps, and talk that from the past, this had been wanting to, this was a concept that had been suggested. And then once you get those things about art around the community, it's the compilation, it's the collaboration, it's, it's all compiling it into a, a centralized database. Um, so, and updating. And updating. Yeah, the, the maintenance is the big thing. We did that with a speakers list for the city. That's one thing to put one together. It's another thing to maintain it and keep it current. That's the that's what I was thinking as well. Mm -hmm. like, who would be responsible for keeping that? Well, unless it's like a back project that you know people who come up behind us. Oh, and, oh yeah. You know, just they own we own it, they own it, it just keeps going. Yeah. And it becomes maybe one of the subcommittees that it gets assigned. Maintain it. Yeah, yeah. Because if you didn't maintain it so that it actually was a mess, you would just put once a year, yeah, right to go around see if everything's still there. Well, you could even have it. You could even have it set up so that you that the registrants have to register once a year, almost like your website or every three years or whatever, right? Well, just like when you pay for your domain for a website, like you gotta pay it. You you choose you one year, two years, three years, right? So you have an annual. One month renewal. Yeah, all you gotta do is say yes, renew me. Yeah. Check my stuff. Easy for yeah. Anyway, that, that's sorry. I feel like it's a really easy. I mean, to me, that seems like an easy uh, attainable thing because yeah. we already have submittable. Submittable is a tool we founded on call for artists who rely on our partners, our regional partners, mm -hmm. to get the word out. And we do it every, you know, every three years, and we're right. annually. You know, artists can update their information, right? It's pretty easy. Yeah. Is that, it doesn't really come, we have, it's already paid for. Is it publicly available? Like, like if I was searching for an artist, could I go there and find it, or maybe it would be on the city website? Or yeah. Like that? yeah. So, what I think if it was going to be truly a regional resource, it would probably be to like that link where you can put it on each of our websites. Mm -hmm. But like Rack has a like their mural with rockers and PDF, yeah, it's really simple. Yeah. So, um, but you you know it has all the artist information. It has um, some work samples, not you know not a great amount, but like enough to get a sense of the artist's work. Sure. Like whether you want to talk to them, interview them, etc. So, um, I I feel like that's pretty pretty simple to put together. <laughs> So I had a question. Um, are there any thoughts out there about so we we've, we've been talking, we've been kind of engaging about new ideas and kind of like general and stuff that no one's talked about um, or brought up um, the idea of um, goals from the past. I mean, some of them are there, like the arts um, walk map. Uh, that was a goal we had last year. Um, DEI obviously was a goal that we had last year. Um, and I'm just kind of glancing through some of the stuff. But 
Are there things that people want to bring forward from last year that um, that we haven't talked about, or do people want to promote anything that we've been working on? Guys, and uh, I just want to program and uh, the music festival. So that I can, you know, um, are you talking about the dark forts? The 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 goal from last uh, the, the last goal in their hearts. Yeah. There was a uh, uh, high school art program. Yeah. There was a music uh, festival and there was film festival. Uh, those those like kind of uh, for me feel uh, it gives uh, more a more good uh, disciplines coming together. So I think that's 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 a goal at least uh, to be achieved. Like Portland has the has the film festival that happened in North Park. They have music festival that happened in this park. Um, my wife has participated in teaching uh, uh, some of the classic uh, dance classes from this park. So we can't really do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't. I, heard, I think I heard Portland. I think. Uh, uh, so uh, Jacob uh, uh, is interested in continuing the uh, young artist program uh, uh, that we're doing, the recognition program that we're doing. Um, he also wants to talk about music events and um, film events. Yeah, and, so go ahead. Yeah, I like where you're going. I, I'm the one who did the, the Portland. Um, movies in the park event um and that kind of sound kind of intertwines with mine um, yeah <laughs> i just wanted to say that <laughs> well laura are they bringing back flicks of the fountain or is that a no-go these days say that again i'm sorry jim are they are they bringing back flicks of the fountain or is that a no-go at this point no, I think it's coming back this year Let's um, let's the is a uh, the, so the movie screening this year is in Conso. Um, there will be art activities there. It's uh, I mean, it hasn't been held for the last two years, but it you know, that's a city event, that's not an arts program event, but it is happening. But it is something that the arts program could advocate for and uh, raise our hand to help out with. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Well, it, you know, and we've talked about this uh, in the past, but uh, it, it may be an opportunity to make it, you know, some of an art event that if you're looking at showcasing uh, local students, uh, films or uh, local artists that are films, then they could be part of that. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah. I like that idea, Jim. Especially because there's a lot of time to, I mean, well, plus you're like kind of waiting for it to get dark and there's all this time, like, you know, people are there, they want to like get a good seat, so that they're just hanging out. And you might as well have some programming during that time, like by young artists, like young filmmakers. I think that would be so cool. Well, then we have the, the cello project and then we have the park on the side mm -hmm. with the same, you know, during yeah. the day. So. There's so many things we can pull from. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, things people want to reiterate or um, or advocate for? Yeah, sir. Oh, oh, oh. I'll go next. Sir? I wanted to advocate for, I, I liked where um, the conversation was going with Oh, the mentoring program and I want to add I heard I thought I heard in a call for it to be an intergenerational but I think there's there's some serious wisdom in putting out to people who are who are skilled in their profession a call to and maybe it's like an old world apprenticeship and and I think that a couple of technical things that I would see there is that we would have to vet the artists who are pairing with the students and all that. But I feel like, especially as a governmental body, that might be easier than like if we're just doing it um, as as public citizens. Um, and then an, another thing that I wanted to um, advocate for was um, I I had sat with the smart goals and I sat with this idea that I. I 
I had had about um, putting art supplies in the library. And I think it was Sharon who said that she was successful in getting teens art supplies, houseless teens art supplies. Is that right, Sharon? Did I get that? That was one of many. So we had home plate being that. We had family promise. We had intergenerational, which I'm going to speak to your idea there. That's Bridge Meadows. They're free art kits. We put them together at our gallery. We, um, I got $1,000 from the city. Um, <laughs> and, and we put it toward these art kits that are for the marginalized or disenfranchised um, audiences that are out there. And we, I'm, I'm hosting a meeting, an outreach meeting for the gallery tomorrow, which that's going to be one of our topics to expand on that. Um, but yeah, if you have any other ideas for that, because this is happening in a, a different realm, this is where we cross pollinate. This is where we talk about different things that different people are doing. I'd love to hear from you about your intergenerational ideas because that's one that we only have one of and that's Bridge Meadows. Um, so yes, to answer your question the long way around, yes, it was home play. Thank you for that, great. So I, so I, I sort of withdraw then my idea and I'll, I'll follow up with Sharon on that one. Because it sounds like there's some version of that already in the works, and I just maybe heard it. But we'll draw anything. Just we'll just merge. Yeah, yeah. It's all, uh, <laughs> this is brainstorming. Yeah. So I was uh, did want to come back around to the diversity equity included. Um, maybe having some goals or guidelines around that when we're awarding grants um, and the public art. Like, what is our goal in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion? Or when we're evaluating proposals, is that included in the evaluation before we look at that kind of thing? So, kind of really, instead of saying, yes, we you know, want this, well, what, how are we going to measure that and make sure that we can achieve some goals to make sure that we are uh, engaging with the community? I think that's a, a great idea because, you know, uh, Looking last year, there was a bunch of the uh, advanced DI, you know, there's a, a lot of that, you know, and a, a lot of it was specific. We have um, goals this year that people submitted a smart goal of DEI, but I think a, a, a document, if we generate a document um, that helps us, I, I mean, not all of us are teachers, um, but in my background, I used to uh, create rubrics, um, you know, that that says, you know, these are what we're looking for. How well did we achieve them? You know, kind of thing, right? Um, and that doesn't mean it has to be static every year, right? Um, but but it gives the group a unified kind of goal outlook as a as a mission versus, yeah, I like that idea. So I'm thinking out loud. So no, it's okay. Like it's on the on the grants committee and there were some categories, but it's like 120, 120. I'm like, I don't know what the difference between 17 and 18 is. Yeah, like, yeah, it was a really big <laughs> number range. It was like one to five would have been fine. Right. And it's like, okay, that's what you bring. What am I looking for? Because I'm a teacher too. So rubrics are like the thing so that we know that we're evaluating more objectively. Right. And if we want to increase the diversity, then that could be included or what we're thinking. You're bringing up a really good topic because because in, specifically in regards to grants, like what are we doing to really um, let populations that are not the typical ones that already know about grants know about them? Because I think that we're missing that, you know, that outreach, that reach into many communities to say, you know, to invite them to come up with ideas. I mean, um, I've spoken with just people that I, you know, I'm acquainted with that had no idea that we even had a, a grants program that they could apply for. So that's something to think about. Even just, even just mapping out how could we, you know, what, where are the places where people gather and how can we go there virtually or actually physically and, and engage different groups of people. You know, how do we get to where they are? I, I think with, with DEI, we have to approach it in a different section. We have to have well, the outreach is its own initiative with DEI, and then 
how we're implementing that. As I know that this is just that, like in the grant group, I completely agree. There were some questions on how we're able to implement that in the scoring. Um, so figuring out what we can and can't do as far as implementing that into our grant and our um, so like our, our expectations and having that kind of outline. Um, and then the other part of that would be yeah, our, our measures of how that's being successful um, of, of how so how we're, how we're doing outreach <laughs> versus how we're then implementing that outreach to elevate and make it more equitable how do we measure it being equitable and then the overall outcome in the end to look back and say, okay, here's what we did with outreach, and then this is how we were able to put this lens into all the different aspects. But I think the outreach and the implementation are kind of two parts of the same tree. Yeah. I think that is very important. For me, I did not want to run for you because you said you know, it would be other than I do know anything about where I can even access as an artist. Facilities that are in Europe. So I kept on looking the website, looking everywhere. I found the CDC, you know, and I said, you figure out. It's just like being new, it's like a huge forest that you're trying to yeah. you know, figure yourself through. So I think more of the outreach and how you can be able to reach, uh, reach a big group of, of people so they can get it into this. And I like the idea of uh, Greg having a good of the common market. So that more of this information can also be disseminated out. Like farmers market is a group that goes, it's not a group that goes to libraries, it's a group that goes to other places. Let's figure it out where uh where is the vehicle, where is this other person to make it easier. Can I jump in really quick? First of all, my deepest apologies. I did an off-site at work and it ended after five. Mm -hmm. And also parking is a nightmare, <laughs> actually. I was driving for about 10 minutes looking for parking. Uh, so despite these apologies for coming late, um, I don't know the context of the discussion in terms of CDI, but for CDI, I'm excited. Um, I don't know if we've ever done this in forgive me we have, but like recognizing like an AEPI grant or like a block system grant and like getting our that way. And then that helps us like embed ourselves more in some of these other communities that we haven't been in. And that's something that's already up there. Uh, so it sounds like a lot of people are really interested in DEI. The other thing I think would be having to do public testimony instead of being counted on for the for the grants. <laughs> that would actually be DEI. Did you guys hear that online? The the comment was um, it would be a great idea to um, because so many people have uh, interest in DEI to separate the grants from the DEI and that group and uh, form its own subcommittee. Can I say one thing about that too? Yes. In addition, I would say that you use DEI in everything that you do. Right. That and it's not just like it's all a little um, encapsulated silo, but it is spread out among all the things that we do with that one. I mean, I think I that many though, I mean, you can look at all of our programs, like all of our programs right. within the arts program um, and use that lens. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. what are we doing? What can we improve on? Mm -hmm. What are those tangible, real things? Mm -hmm. and, and we just don't, I mean, I just, I know I'm going to talk about implementation. Um, uh, and I, I just want to like caution, we just need to be really uh, thoughtful about our subcommittees because they require staff after hours, they require public notice, they require reporting. There's a lot of logistical support that has to happen. So I just want to be careful about um, keeping keeping our subcommittee sustainable, knowing that we have to have, like, have, we have to, by statute, have the public art committee. We have to have the grants committee. So those are two kind of like, those are, those are locked in. We have to have them. So beyond that, like, be thoughtful. So what you're saying is, is that you're limiting uh, 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 the subcommittee uh, one one per person. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> she freaked out. Right? <laughs> 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 That's not what I'm saying. Or create like a committee. Yeah. 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 Yeah
in structuring this, but wouldn't it make more sense if, if, as compared to DEI and grants being a hybrid subcommittee of new parts awards and grants being like a subcommittee that kind of made it already. I mean, we I like that's how I organize them that are like that are holders. <laughs> yeah, because they're, they're I mean they're grants and programs. They're yeah, a scholarship and a grant program. I fully agree. Yeah. Uh, one benefit of having its own subcommittee not to go the other direction, but um, the the thing that I think that we are lacking um, that April really pointed out is just that that we don't have a group whose responsibility is to help us as a commission um, uh, uh, target our our goal of DEA, right? Uh, because you know it's such a broad topic, but what are we specifically working on? You know how do we know that we're achieving our goal, right? How do we tell other people that we're achieving our goals? How do we tell council that we're achieving their goals or, or striving towards their priorities? But is right? Alexis a, is she somebody that we can go to as one of those touch points for knowing if we're kind of doing okay in this realm or not? Without tapping yeah, her bandwidth, I know it's, 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 a, it's, a bit, it's a little bit tricky because everybody's kind of beyond the path. Yeah, yeah, okay, and I think that we this would have to be strategic and kind of with her and just let her know that like this is something we have coming, it's in the pipeline. Yeah. We would want you to advise and if we can do anything, any recommendations that we're making. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a DEI toolkit that they use. So um I feel like that's I mean that's a reasonable expectation. I just want to be careful about committing staff time. Yeah, I guess bandwidth. Yeah. But I bet that she is that sort of she is a resource. Yeah, absolutely. And her staff for taking her yeah. Meetings. Yeah. I mean, uh just kind of thinking and being respectful of what you're saying, um, you know, on the bandwidth in the city, you know, if a individual subcommittee isn't, you know, feasible just because of you know the sheer volume of what they're doing. Um, is, would an idea can we add a role uh, amongst our commission uh, uh, to, to have a DEI role so that that person would seek out the toolkits and remind us of the things that exist to help us remind us of the council goals, remind us of the goals that we set, you know, in our day to day. Uh, uh, because there is this remarkable about including DEI in everything that we do. You know, um, uh, uh, is there someone that can help us be, uh, I would use the term, keep us honest? You know, uh, uh, we all need to be reminded of uh, our goals sometimes. Um, maybe it's not a commission, maybe it's just a role that someone plays amongst our commissioners. You mean as an individual, like an ombudsman? Yeah. Role. 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 Accountable manager, a little accountable person holding everybody accountable? Yes. Being accountable. <laughs> my only hesitancy with that is is I, I feel uh, especially in this capacity that DEI is a collective voice right if we put one person in that and while I get where you're coming from and I think that's a great idea I think the reality is which one of us is going if, if there's just a lot of different scopes that as we're talking about and how that is approached and how much work and there's yeah like that I again mean, it just gets I don't know if it's complicated on how qualified that person is who is, is taking on that burden what scope is it or are we going it to ask for training say, is it 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 wasn't to say that they would take it all on it's just they're the person that reminds us are they're the people that know where the resources are they like the toolkits that you know, you know we get reminded of you know they're um, not they're, um, they can be helpful as as we as a commission try to fulfill those roles and talk about those things, right? Um, so I was just thinking of it to broader sense. I mean, I just I mean I feel like that if, if it is its own committee, right? And the committee has a chair, then the chair should be that liaison, should be that person that is is that kind of present voice yeah. all the time. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the same person for the whole year. Sure. You can have a different chair at every every quarter so that it is rotating through. Um, and it's not just a burden on one person or a, you know a significant like it's 
it's such a broad thing of trying to bring it into how we're going to apply it to all the different categories that to ask them of how can we apply it to grants? How can we do this? How can we do that? And then also having it is uh, as someone in this committee that has experienced pushback of trying to bring in DEI, which seems to not be the tune at all, but in putting that when there is pushback on that, that can't be on one person. No, no, I can't agree. There needs it would need to be a it's too broad and essential of a role for it not to be a subcommittee in my opinion. I think that that um this should be its own priority, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the DEI subcommittee. I was trying to be a people pleaser because I'm a little child. <laughs> 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 um okay so uh we're running a little bit over our timelines a bit um i did want to um uh uh i i wanted to point out and i'm sure you guys all know this because i'm just a technical person um but uh my goal my smart goal the thing that i want to advocate for um is is looking at our one percent for the arts um, because I see the one percent for the arts that that we are really um, um, in tune with. It, it's a part. It, it is a part of the code of the city that that we're part of. That we have decision power in it. Um, but I think that it needs a, a tune up because the one percent for the arts is the fuel to drive the engine of this commission and of of the arts in Beaverton. Um, and one of the things that that um, I realized when I started two and a half years ago or whatever on the commission is, is that um, there wasn't really a plan in place for all of this art that that we are building in the city to maintain it. You know, it's on it's on the general maintenance of the city to um, maintain, but. I mean, no offense to them, um, you know, I work in facility management, you know, and maintaining art is its own specialty, you know, and it's not something that a standard electrician is really good at. It's not something that a general building engineer is good at, you know, or a grounds guy is good at, you know, um, but those are the resources that the city has right now. Um, um, because there isn't a program in place um, in I don't, I don't think, at least not in the code itself, there is, it's not codified to allow um, uh, or that maintenance to occur. And so, so that's kind of like where I came from. I just sort of kind of want to review the 1% for the arts. I want to see how we can uh, see what other cities do and see how we can um, uh, suggest a, a revision to council um, you know, for consideration um or or conversation um you know and um start advocating um uh, for a more robust early arts i think this was if i remember right please don't quote me on this but i think it was late 80s that the one percent for the arts actually got codified in uh, 85 yeah. in mid 80s okay no yeah. we're wrong but um uh but uh you know that, that's a few decades ago and um and and we're different we're kind of a happening place in Beaverton. um people are looking for us um uh for housing for business development and uh and there's a lot of people looking at us um and there's a lot of development happening and it's an opportunity and opportunity for this um so that's that's my advocacy um that is my one one and a half minute pitch. Um, uh, <laughs> so um, uh, what I want to do a little bit, and I'm going to turn it over to Lynn a little bit, and I'll shut up for a second. But um, I want to be sure that we go around and we ask everyone if there's anything that they want to pitch, that they want to advocate for, that they heard specifically one or two things, you know, um, so that they can have a voice. Because the next then the next thing that we're going to do is um, is, is we're going to take uh, 15 minutes to write a sparkle, something that that is very specific, something that we feel that we can obtain uh, that um, that that is uh, has a time frame, everything um, as so that uh, so we'll write that out and we'll post it on the wall, we'll post it in the chat, 
Um, and and then we can begin to prioritize what we want to do as a commission. So. So if we already did it, are we done with that? Part? Well, yeah, yeah, no, no, honestly. So so like the idea was like when you developed your smart goal and you came in early was to have a primer, right? Maybe you want to tweak it a little bit. Maybe you don't. Um, I think um, I might type two. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> right. So um, so you know it's. It's it's one of those things because there's probably people on here that weren't quite sure what they wanted to do, sure. you know, and um, and I want to afford them the opportunity to have that solid voice. Um, okay. And um, and so when uh, when we move into that, I I want to um, start kind of like correlating the um, similar ideas and then start start prioritizing them. But um, uh, so so Lynn's gonna. Lead us through uh, the last little bit to uh, uh, say your uh, last piece and in, in, uh, in your well, what do we call it? The passion vote the in our yeah. yeah, the passion vote in our youth arts award. So, yeah. um, so now is the time to do that. That's so right. I took half of what Linda was going to say. It's it's great. I mean, really, this is the invitation. So you are invited to, you know, we can go around the room. Actually, I think that'd be a good way to do it. Why don't we just go down through the roster? And I'm just going to say, you know, if if you have something you'd like to talk about, then speak up. If you feel like there's nothing you are passionate about or want to bring to the table, then just, you know, just pass. But we'll just go down the, we'll go down the list of, in reverse alphabetical order. <laughs> and you can also repeat things that other people have said. It doesn't have to be an original idea. You can bang my game, that's totally fine. Yeah, so we can't do 16 different things this year, but you know, and, and so all of the things that we've done that we've talked about that you all have on this list, um, that's you know, it's in there in your email that you know, you have, um, you might want to share, you want to share your screen with just half those things, or no, uh, that's why I emailed everything in that list. Yes. So everything we talked about, so I'm going to start backwards. So Jacob, you're going to be the first guy to go. Um, is there? <laughs> yeah. So for a minute and a half, is there anything, you can pass, but is there anything you feel particularly strongly about that you'd like to really see us say, like, of everything we talked about or something we haven't, that you'd like to see happen? The art book and uh, the art map. The art The art and each if we cover the art map, uh, you know, the map and then the, the idea of the having a free user there for the user for people in the So the art walk and a free, um, free open day at the research. And then. Uh, on the pub, public private partnerships with the, with, with the artists, uh, with the artists. Um, I think that uh, the partnership between organizations and, and, and artists is something that. that I think the mentorship program? Not necessarily even the mentorship program, because uh, we, when I, I had a program called the Top of the Running, and we had our partners in, uh, in Italy. Uh, and what we did, we had a painting of our of, of the kids who were in uh, printed on the wine bottle for several months, and then the, uh, the profit that came out of it was put in the in the in the, in the, in the shop. So something like similar similar to that, but, you know, that like what private partnership on you know, how can we deal with support for that? Thanks. All right. And uh, um, I'm very passionate about the uh, high school uh, program and very much uh, having uh, arts in the in high school uh, as, uh, as, uh, as a mental health, as a mental health uh, uh, issue, and also dance and movement, with, uh, especially for high school. For high school. Thanks. Okay. Sarah, you're next on the list. <coughs> your uh, minute and a half. 
start now. Are you there? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, so um, I'd like to see um, I'd like to see there be spaces for artists around town in empty spots. So if there's real estate agents that we know of that could help um, shepherd us to spaces that are available that would be amenable and maybe even excited to to host artists, that's one. Uh, two would be a mentorship program for all kinds, woodworking, metal smiths, jewelers, um, shoemakers. Um, you said Nike, you said other, like, um, you know, I'm thinking Trader Joe's has a resident artist. McMinimins probably does, whoever said that. I think I was saying. Um, and, and creating, a, I, re I recognize there's a lot organizationally that would go into making that happen. And I think it would be well worth it because I think there's uh, a lot of folks seeking new kinds of employment um, across the generations. And I think there, it would be, a, a, you know, some serious dignity if someone could have a craft, you know, the whole idea of, um, I'm going to throw some Bible, Bible Bible at you, the teach a person to fish. I really, I think, I think there's so much validity to that. So that's two. Three is I would like art supplies accessible to children, to houseless youth, to the houseless, um, to folks who are marginalized who might, you know, have be choosing um, their heat or their electricity or their rent um, and not art supplies. So somehow um, dovetailing on the good work that I heard was happening, um, I think that's really worth it. And I'm done. Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I made up a new rule for myself. I'll raise my hand when you have 15 seconds. <laughs> Okay, so next person is going to be Fendi. Uh, I think I heard uh, Laura say, um, like, giving opportunity to artists in spaces, like, and it's similar to what Sarah just said, but I feel like you have mentioned, was it either tickets or spaces, but I I feel like it was spaces. Um, I like that idea. Um, I liked other ideas, too, but that's the only one that can come to my, man, my mind right now, other than mine. Um, but mine is the, the flicks on the bricks. Apparently we have that in Beaverton. I'm still learning in Beaverton. Um, so I'm learning that we have lots of things that I'm already imagining. Um, so yeah, the space, that would be dope for, for artists. And I think that that falls into, I don't know if you had said it into like uh, DEI, you know, inclusion. So yeah. Good. Next up is going to be Sydney. I'm sorry. Oh, can I have one more? Um, I, I, I really like that um the healing uh the healing one as well like I'm I think we just got to think it out a little bit more but I'm all about like arts and healing and like I think that'd be really dope for like the the community like you know who was really affected by trauma um yes I think that's dope okay great that, that gave Sydney a chance to uh <laughs> find her unmute button <laughs> And give my dog a chance to stop growling. Um, I my perspective isn't super unique, but um, the two ideas I'm really drawn to are um, the supplies in the libraries and the residencies in vacant spaces. And the reason I'm drawn to those ideas is because I think that it is a little different than some of the stuff that we normally support, which are. Um, artists that are kind of already established and um, have their, their gig going and know what they want. And I think that this kind of inspires more people to get started if they haven't really had the resources to take that leap yet. Um, so those are the two ideas that I'm passionate about because I also feel like they would be relatively easy to actually accomplish in our time frame. Excellent. You still have 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm used to being succinct because I'm on the record in court, so. <laughs> All right. Well then, in that case, next up, Peg. Okay. I, I wrote out about the art law, and I still believe that that is, is something that is, is a great PR piece for the city if it supports the yes, art lives here. Um, and I think it's not too difficult to do. It's, it's a common thing in many towns. I, I did an art walk in Melbourne and in an afternoon. I think it's fantastic. 
And I thought because I was not a page of one. But I like the artist resource database too, because that can be a base for many other things, such as businesses with vacant spaces that want to find clients, or artists who have things that can be done quickly. And I, I, I recognize it's not as glamorous or as, as maybe people oriented as some of these others. And it doesn't solve a specific problem, but I think it's a resource for a lot of it. And I think it is something that's doable in the time frame and not a lot of maintenance required. A lot of not a long going maintenance. Once a year, you're pretty much taking the place. So. Great. Excellent. Still have 15 seconds. Yeah. So. Can I can I ask a quick and clarifying question yeah. about Art Walk? So Art Walk sometimes is a whole like event thing that happens first Fridays. No, I, I'm sorry. You're not talking about, about that. You're talking about like a guided tour of artwork throughout the city. I, I mean map okay. can be a digital printed. Here you are. Welcome to Beaverton. Yeah, there's something else on the whole that. Do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Um, okay, so Sue Pike, here's your minute and a half. What do you got? Um, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is two things. The art walk in preparing, I'd like to see to go with the walk that's available. We need the paper that's going to explain each art project. Where did the idea come from? Um, what's the history of it? A lot of people don't even know where the artwork is currently in downtown Beaverton if you're walking. So I think something of that nature. And then secondly, I'd like to see us bring back concerts in the round because that is very family oriented. And we always have projects for children to do. And we art commissioners would support that and help along with the staff putting that together. And the same thing falls into place in picnics in the park when we as art commissioners provided projects that were available for the public when they were coming to the picnics and we would have projects for the children. Ten, ten seconds. That, that was my 15 second warning. <laughs> Good job, Sue. All right. Excellent. Thanks, Sue. Um, Shoshana. Um, I just want to piggyback on what Sue and some others have talked about. I think the reason why I really like the idea of a guided art walk, well, there's several reasons, but the biggest one is that I think in the time frame and in the planning of what would need to happen in order to make it happen, it's more feasible than a lot of these other ideas that are fantastic ideas, but would we be able to accomplish them in this year, next year? You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, and I, I, I sympathize with Laura and city, you know, city teams, city, city staff that are gonna have to be stewarding a lot of this stuff. Um, Cause I, I know that, um, you know, we have priorities that have been established by the city council and we need to be able to, to um, have our projects fit within those priorities. And I think that the art walk in it, in of itself is something that um, does contribute to making Biverton a more livable city, a city where people feel like they, they, um, they can see culture here. And um, that's, that's why I really feel like the art walk is something that really should be um, a priority. Uh, the other thing I would agree with Sue on too is the um, the concerts in the round, specifically though because they were free, um, and you know there's issues with we've talked about in the past and all you know through this whole thing about you know how, how people are concerned about um, you know the financial feasibility of, of being able to have things in, at at the Reezer and having free events et, et cetera, and while all those all those things are things that I think we should focus on. I think that's a more of a long-term goal, and especially because the Reeser probably, as I have mentioned before, probably has a, a, a development department who's looking at sponsorship possibilities 
for certain events at their at their space. That's something that we would, you know, we would need to partner with them or, or you know, have a long, longer term discussion about. So the idea of having, again, something that our commission supports um, for, you know, a concert in the round or et cetera, again, it would be a free event and we would be able to get a diverse group of performers and, um, and um, audience because of because of the uh, the uh, accessibility of the of the uh, the venue. Okay. That's what I have to say. Thanks, um, Ryan. I think I did my minute and a half. The only other one says working on the one percent. I would uh, like to continue our youth arts award program and expand on it um, and continue that. Okay. Next would be Sharon. Well, I think a lot of us have done a bulk and mine mail here because um, I was the one who wrote up the um, the one that was the pipe cream at the end. <laughs> um, I, I am a chair of a NAC and the South End, and we have a very Beaverton downtown centric approach to a lot of what we do. I'd like to spread the wealth. We have 11 NACs in the city. We have people who are on the south end who are wanting to do some murals and some art activities. And so we need to encourage that. And um, I just really would like to utilize what we already have in the city. We have our maps, we have the the um, the back, we have the, the dab, we have the BDA, the downtown association. We have got a bunch of people we could draw from. And it's amazing that if we all went out and you know, within our own maps, because we do come from different maps, see what's out there and not just make it Beaverton downtown centric. Um, and I think that, you know, it really does the welcoming community um, aspect of city council and the community wellness and fun. Speaking of wellness as a retired nurse, I am definitely into the healthy health and um, healing parts of this. And I, I was working with the, before Merrill Hurst um, shut down, uh, the music uh, therapy program where in the NICU we had people who came in with instruments and we had you know, all the way down to different parts of music that should and should not be used. Um, decibels. Five, four. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I Jane, you're up next. Hey, um, I'll just uh, piggyback on what other people said about the citywide neighborhood art events, uh, developing neighborhood art walks, and having a, a booklet or map um, of, to, you know, people come from out of town or even, you know, people that live in town, just finding the different art. And as Sue said, you know, some background and information about the artist, um, et cetera. So I think that's really important. Also, I'd like to see more teen involvement. Uh, maybe connections with the schools. Um, I know teens have to get so many hours of community service to, to graduate. Well, maybe we can offer some opportunities where they can get community service hours through the arts. And, you know, maybe they can help put some of these programs together. And then again, I think Sue and uh, maybe it was Sydney mentioned uh, Concerts in the round, bringing those back. But I would just like add one more thing: concerts in the round with art vendor opportunities. So it's a real, you know, kind of, um, you know, a nice day out where you can listen to music, see art, buy art, that sort of thing. So, how did I do? Fifteen seconds. Excellent. Okay, April, you're next. Um, I like the art walk idea. We talked about it before. Um, I think that we need to make that happen, so I'm totally on board with that. And also the establishment of the uh, uh, subcommittee, who is responsible for making a smart goal for us and bringing to the whole board, so that um, we're all thinking about DEI when we're doing all these things. So that's it. Okay, and uh, so Destry. All right, so. I would propose that, like I said, we have a hybrid subcommittee that is the youth arts and the grants, and then the 1% for public art would also work on rewriting the structure, as Brian said, or rewriting the bill, however I the, the, yeah, the ordinance, and then another committee that is directly for DEI, uh, and I, I feel that in that committee, 
when we're separated from the grants, we have an opportunity to be inclusive of something like an art resource database, um, the mentorship programs involving teens, all of that is DEI. It's not just this, it, it, it encompasses everything. So both creating that lens on how we can apply it and then spearheading of different people in that subcommittee, the different initiatives for that. Um, the even spaces around town or different ways that we can use that committee to make both long term and short term goals. Great. You're succinct. All right, Jim, you're up next. Um, yeah, I'll be real quick because uh, Sue pretty much said what I thought. Um, but uh, to reiterate, um, Arts Walk with an Arts Map that's been on the, on the agenda for years. Um, getting back into events, I know that COVID has uh, shut us down for a couple of years, so we need to be out there and be the face of uh, the Arts with the Arts program. Um, we can talk all we want about all these things. We can grow them through interaction with people and really hear what they have to say. Um, and that's that's something that uh, we haven't been able to do. Most of the people on this board have not experienced that yet, and it'll be great when we can do it. Um, and to continue to grow uh, our involvement with the youth and because that's the future of the arts in Beaverton. Great, all right, good job. Uh, Rebecca, is she still up there? I think I think she went back to her show. Yeah, she's, in, okay. she's in New York City. Sorry, Rebecca. Oh, yeah. Enjoy the show. <laughs> I think okay. she has some more. Things. And then uh, last, last is me. Um, so uh, I, I, I think we're we're coming to something here. So I am gonna um, say two things. I think if I'm thinking in terms of priorities and what's going to make the greatest impact for the community and beyond. I would agree having a map of the art, whether it's Beaverton only or the neighborhoods, you know, that have that, like, uh, like it has been suggested. Um, I think that that has an immediate sort of easy impact. The artist registry, I think it's easy. I think it's easy to achieve. It does, it's not a heavy lift for anyone. Um, and it just becomes a matter of promoting it. And then last, um, I'll, I'll vote for my own thing here. Um, my, I already spoke about the, um, you know, arts as a pathway to healing um, and to have that specifically um, uh, inclusive of um, a diverse selection of speakers. So a speaker series on uh, healing through art. The end. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> So if I was to uh, reorganize a lot of this stuff uh, today, I would probably have been in a half uh, ahead of time because I have so much more I want to talk about now. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so lesson learned for me. Uh, <laughs> but you know, um, uh, what we want to go from here, um, and these exercises will go fast, and, and I'm kind of recreating some of this on the fly because there's more people online than I anticipated. Yeah. Um, um, because what I was hoping is, is that that we would get three 15 minutes to walk around the room, have some pens, which I'll I'll start passing out now, um, and uh, and we can take a uh, a uh, post-it. This is a very large post-it easel, right? And we can write one goal largely so that people can read it um, and and post it on the window. You don't have to be smart you don't have to like like write out like your um six point plan um <laughs> you know <laughs> but uh uh you know so we've done a lot of time we know what these smart goals are that we've been talking about um and uh you know we can we can kind of be clear but as we're walking around as we're talking um you know we don't need to recreate a goal you'd be like oh you got the art swap goal great 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 i'm not going to recreate that okay i'm going to be sure that this one gets put up here so because we have so many people online um you're going to do your own little virtual event and then laura and i are going to work to combine it right at the very end yeah. um <laughs> uh okay. and uh, merge the gap and so what i would like you guys to do is in the chat um type the word goal colon mark and then type your goal because i suspect people will be talking in the chat um, 
a little bit. So I want to be very clear that that this is the goal. And if you guys um, can type out what goals your top three goals, no more. You know, you may only have one goal. That's fine. Um, but uh, uh, you kind of want to like fill out. And if someone's already said your goal, you don't need to rewrite it um, because test three stops is coming, and uh, we'll know uh, <laughs> how many people support that here in a second. So. Um, uh, does everyone kind of understand the basic gist of what we want to do in the next few minutes? And, uh, and you know, we don't need to spend the whole time because we don't have a big group. You know, it's, it's going to go faster than I thought it would. Um, uh, so, um, and we'll just monitor the chat to see when it slows down, and then we'll um, monitor the room to see if uh, things slow down here. Those online, feel free to call each other and have conversations or call in or, you know, whatever as you're doing it a little bit. You know, it's not supposed to be independent work. It's supposed to be a group work thing. And, and I apologize. I didn't do a very good job on a hybrid line. So. <laughs> yeah, so, so okay. we're, we're, we're thinking on the fly. We're, we're about the preachers. If, if we've proven anything for ourselves the last yeah. year, yeah. so, yeah. so let's give each other five minutes uh, because we're kind of running out of time. Um, and uh, and let's start posting some goals. Online people post your goals if you can't see ours, and uh, we'll do live and then we'll combine them uh, in about five minutes. Are you all asking us for us to put three combined goals or three each? Uh, you don't need to do three. I just want to do any more than three, right? Because we're going to get a lot of overlap. Because you know, uh, like there's a lot of people online that want to do parts block, right? So if that's one of your goals, you don't need to rewrite that if someone's already written it. Oh, does that make sorry. Sense? I figured what you were I'm not trying to get like a, a hundred list item. I'm just trying to Got it. okay, okay well, thank you. So so I think what I'll try to do is if you guys enter them and I, I see that there's a duplicate, I won't enter it. But if it's something new, I'll actually write it on one of our post-its and put it up here. So we sure that we have one piece of paper or a big space between multiple goals. <laughs> so are, are you going to type it in when done with like a whiteboard kind of situation? No. Uh, so we don't have that. Room, so I think on the video, like, like on the videos, like on the videos, like on the videos, like on the videos, like here's the top, here's the top of the goal. I cannot do that while I'm posting this. Okay. Well, I can, but then I can't not be able to see people. Yeah, I don't, I, that's just not. Um, okay. We're going to capture everything here on paper and then let them know what they are. And then we're going to do the exercise with the dots where people go around and they put their thought on the thing that they want to fit. That's the stuff I We're going to Upstairs and downstairs, but they're both on that side of the building.
Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Um, but w uh, we're going to need to have people vote on them, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so it's was... better to have us write them down on the sheets than, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're right. You're yeah. Right. Okay. So will... I'll read them to you and then you can scribe them. Okay, ready? Go. Empower youth to know that the arts is a way for them to aid in sorry this is really aid in culture building how you know that arts arts is a way for them to aid in culture building okay so I'll, I'll, I'll read that one. So next one, yeah. to give artists venues and tools for public exposure. Okay, you ready? Okay, make creating and consuming art more accessible to underrepresented members of our community. Creating and, and consuming art and consuming. more accessible to underrepresented members of our community. I'm ready for next one. Okay. Create an art walk that provides history background and also distances so it incorporates health info while you are walking to creates history yeah it provides history background and also the like walkable distance between so that it also incorporates health goals Okay. Tell me when you're ready for the next one. I'm ready for the next one. Okay. Create and fully develop a Beaverton art walk with map and full explanation of piece and info about the artist. So it sounds like this. Yeah. Okay. Lisa. Okay. Um, arts and healing series, residency spaces. Arts and healing. Um, okay, bring back family friendly concerts in the round. And um, I, I'm going to summarize this um, arts activities for young for, for young people, kids. And young people. Arts activities. Yeah, at the concerts. That's it. That's all I have in the chat. All right, we'll wait for them to finish writing, and then we have everyone back here. Good. We got distracted by the each five for the most dazzling. That's awesome. 
It's pretty cool to have a venue right next to a uh, wetland. Right. So as people are finishing up writing, um, I'm going to verbally talk through um, all the things. I'm not going to like, I'm going to paraphrase a lot of things because I think everyone understands the ideas that we've talked about today. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, and so I'm going to read through it once and then Destry is going to read through them again. And when, De when Destry is reading through it, um, that's when I want you guys to raise your hands and um, Destry is going to put that many dots on, on that particular item because you are in support of it because it's something that you uh, uh, want to put energy towards this year, right? Okay, cool. Um, in, any questions? I know you guys can't see it, so you guys will have to write down the things that interest you. Yes, Sarah, you had a question. Can we vote multiple times? Yes, you, um, this one, the first round of Destry's dots, anything you want to support. Second round of Destry's dots, she's going to talk about priorities, and then you get a limit on that, so. Oh, so I think what might be helpful <laughs> to is to um, go and read each of these, and then I can have them like raise their hand if they want to put a dot there. Yeah, that's that what sense? I said. Yeah. Oh, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, but I was going to read through it once so they knew what all of them were. Okay. Because they didn't see anything, and then Destry is going to read through and do the both then. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then um, those that are in the room, um, yeah. while I'm verbalizing it to people here, you can go ahead and put your design dots, um, uh, your your post its on on the um, ones that you want as I read through. So there'll be a few things going on right now. Um, so the first, so I'll, first time I'm just going to read through, and then uh, you'll vote when Destry uh, reads. So uh, first one is arts activities for young people. And uh, please speak up, Sarah. Oh, sorry, oh. I'm not voting yet. <laughs> oh no, no, no. So, so I, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the list for everything. I'm gonna read the list for everything, so you know what's there. And then when Destry reads it, that's when you vote, right? I want to make sure you guys know what's there, so you have a broad understanding. Does that make sense? You don't need to vote now. Um, but if you can't hear me um, going through, just stop me. And, and yeah, I'll I'll be watching. So you know, raise your hand, and I can repeat it for you. If, so, if need be. So the first one is arts activities for young people, diverse speaker series, healing through arts. Um, uh, this one has multiple, so uh, that one is taken yeah. over there. Artist database. That's over there. Okay. Um, and then uh, art therapy and healing. Okay, that's very good. Okay. Um, private, uh, private public partnerships, mentorship program, high school outreach program, uh, DEI subcommittee, create lens through outreach program, partner with uh, library at farmer's market, artist database, uh, resource for all events, spaces, uh, those artists, seeking artists. Update 1% for the arts by December. Art walk uh, guide, uh, citywide versus downtown century. Uh, promoting history, background, also incorporate um, health. Uh, continue the arts awards and expand it. Empower youth to know that arts is a way in culture building. Give artists venues and tools for public exposure. This is a repeat. Uh, and uh, make creating and consuming art more accessible under 200 representatives. Thank you. And 
and that is the full list. And so I'll turn it over to Destry to, uh, and again, this is just in support of the idea, and then we'll prioritize it in the next round. Okay, so our activities for young people. So raise your hand. Okay, so we've got Jim, Jane, Sarah, Shoshana, Cindy. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Diverse speaker series healing through art. We have four. Oh, five. You only get one hand, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Private public partnerships. Oh, mentorship program for high school outreach program. Well, so that I have one, two. two. Can you repeat that, Bethany? Um, the mentorship program and a high school outreach program. Did you skip over artist database? No, no. Uh, there's, a, there's another. It, it's there's a duplicate, Jane. So we'll we'll oh. list it later on. Yeah. So we have two for mentorship. And I think this is part of my PI subcommittee when it's the outreach. This whole one might be. Um, but yeah, so all the tools are Did you get the two that voted for the mentorship? Got it. Um, DEI subcommittee create a lens for outreach program or create a DEI lens outreach program partner with Library of Farmers Market. Wait, so is that all one? That would be the goal of the DEI subcommittee okay. being its own, which incorporated a bunch, which would also then include basically what I had said. Yeah, okay. Um, the one percent of dividing up. So the DEI subcommittee that includes those individual goals. Okay. So DEI subcommittee. Any votes? We got two. Artist with Sarah Pando. Yeah, I got her. Artist database resource for all events, spaces, and artists, event spaces, and those seeking artists. We got three. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. What was that one again? I, I, I could barely hear it. Okay. Artist database resource for all events, spaces, and those seeking artists. Okay. So raise your hands if you support. We got three. Four, sorry. Four. Update the 1% for art by December. We have zero. The Art Wall Art Guide, historic background, it also incorporates, your history background also incorporates health. Three, four, four. Was that for the Art Walk? I can't understand you. Yes, yeah, so vote yes okay, for the then Art I want, Then I want to vote, yeah. vote for that if that's what that was. Okay. Yes. So raise your hand one more time. One, two, three, four, five. Sarah, is your hand up? No, five. Okay. Continue the Youth Arts Awards and expand. Continue the Youth Arts Awards and expand. Four. Five. Five. Who's the fifth? Oh, I see. Okay, got it. Five. Empower you to know that arts is a way in a way of culture. In empower you to know that arts is a way in culture building. A oh, way in culture building. No. So empower you. In culture building, you know that arts is in a way culture building. Okay, uh, we have one. 
Give artists venues and tools for public exposure. Give artists venues um, and tools for public exposure. One, two, three, four, five. Make, cre make creating and consuming art more accessible to the underrepresented. Make create, okay, hang on a second. Keep your hands raised. One, two, three, four. We've got four. Okay, and that's all of them. Okay, so that's good. So we're, we're doing a time, time out right now. So I think, do we want to just tally up how many posts we have on each of these? Yeah. Oh, you did it? It's yeah. the number in the other one. Okay, okay. so uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of how we can. So um, I'm going to read back what the biggest numbers are, right? So from uh, highest priority to lowest priority, and I'll tell you the number of people who are um, supporting it. Um, and I'm going to do it for the uh, top 50%. Right? Top 50%. Yeah, okay. yeah, top 50%. Okay. Um, uh, do you have any objections to that? Okay. Uh, so coming in at number one is Art Walk Guide with 11 people. 11 Art Walk Guide Art Walk. has 11 votes. Coming in on a tie for number two is Continue Youth Arts Award and Expand and uh, Diverse Speaker Series Healing Through the Arts. Both received nine votes. Coming in. Uh, in third place, is, with eight votes, is Artist Database, DEI Subcommittee, and then seven, I think. So, okay, yeah, so then it's seven votes for arts activities for youth people, and we'll stop at six, that would be 50%. Yeah, um, six would be, uh, so six people voted for in artists, venues, and tools. So I think, Destry, you think uh, you want to do the priority dots with those top 50%? Or? Why are we doing that without your update? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. We're still running it. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I don't want to like, I mean, so what I would say is, this is just like the asterisk, the caveat. We already have all of our funds committed in our budget. We received budget cuts. Um, our budget is very tight. It will be this year and it will be next year. We can't have any new staff positions. Um, we can't have temporary staff. So we have to do everything that we're going to do with the current staff who are already pretty pretty tapped out, like we're, we're definitely overstretched. So I don't want to say that to discourage because I want to like, this is this is amazing, like there's amazing ideas here. So I think if we're going to consider some of these things, we think about how like to consolidate, um, how to leverage what the things that we're already doing that meet some of these goals. Um, we uh, maybe pursue low hanging fruit, Things like the artist registry, the um, the art walk, those things are, are pretty inexpensive when we're thinking about budget, right? And then the last thing I will say is the subcommittees have to be kept to a dull roar. I hate to say that, but we um, that is that was a, a um, very much delivered from our board of commission uh, manager who was like, you need to. You need to draw back the, the subcommittees because um, it can be really cumbersome and, um, and it, it taxes staff, and we don't have any overtime. So, if we are doing evening meetings, it just, it, it, we just don't have the ability to do it. So, does what um, you just said have any bearing on the youth awards? In what way? 
funded. So, okay. The youth arts awards are fully funded. Okay. And they're being paid for this fiscal year. Next fiscal year, they're in the budget at twenty-five thousand for ten awards. So, yeah. Yep. Okay. So, what? Since we're so over time, what? Or well, not so over, but since we're at over time, we are going to put together in a document these the, the top fifty percent that we just everyone voted for. And then in our next meeting, so in two weeks, we will go over them again and we can vote on this 50% to narrow it down to what's achievable with the knowledge of our budget constraints and have some time to sit on it. So I think a lot of these can kind of be combined. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. I, I think that what I want to focus on um, is just to get us into a place where we can figure out what is achievable in one year. What can we do this year? What can we do in three years? Yeah, it's almost nine. What can we do in five years? Yeah. So those are the, the kind of how I would like this to yeah. And uh, so I think the, the um, commission's leadership will um, take these. Um, we'll take a first stab at kind of organizing it to like priorities over years, but but we kind of our gut reaction, right? We're not sitting in stone, um, just to kind of throw an idea out there. And then um, the first thing we'll do at our next meeting is to test these dots so that we can set our first, second, and third priorities. And um, and uh, we will um, uh, uh, kind of agree to a certain number that we, depending on how those line out, those dots line out, that conversation will say, these are our priorities, we'll vote on it, and then we'll move forward with this year. It, does, does, does that sound like a plan? Anyone object to that? Can I ask just a, a quick question, just as a like a pulse check? If we extended the May meeting to two hours, would that be objectionable or would that be okay? So if we were to have it from six to eight as opposed to six thirty to eight, would that be doable? Anyone not doable for it? I just don't, I mean, an hour and a half is not very much time, and I want to make sure that we get this dialed in. And so I want to have it like some dedicated time. So that extra half hour would be clutch for that. So or it seems like everybody's a go for that. So I'm going to go ahead and send that notice out for that extra half hour. Okay. Well, guys, for going longer. Thank you for bearing with me mm -hmm. and, um, and trying to adapt to the hybrid format. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. You want to show my shoes? Look at my shoes. This was yeah, yeah, I've been waiting on that. Let's do it again. They used to look like this, and now they look like this. Thanks, Jacob and Laura, y'all. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> and we have the space until 8, so if you guys do want to paint shoes, um, you can just come on out if you don't. If you just want to hang out and talk, that's fine, too. I probably will just gently start to like You guys, thank you so much. Next time. I'm there. Well, no, 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 that's fine.